All right, YouTube, what is up? Andrew Lee here, and today in this quick video, I am going to touch up this painting, Vision, and we're gonna show you how to add, or do, how to paint trees, how I paint trees, and I'm gonna fix up these guys over here. I did this back in high school, and I just don't think that this area properly got the attention and detail that it needed. I want them to be more fluffy, like this side over here, and I'm gonna add them into these guys over here. And that'll be it. First, gotta mix our colors together. And we need some sort of shade of green for here. And we don't need to do the brown because the tree, the leaves are gonna go right on top. So this is my palette from another painting. And we're gonna add in some, I have some yellow right here. And I'm using, I always use Hansa Yellow. Hansa Yellow Light as well as Ultramarine Blue. And I'm probably gonna throw in some white with that as well. And because I go through through much white, I tend to get the bigger one. And this is usually titanium white using Nutrig brand oil paint right here. All right, so I mixed my green and add some white and I'm gonna start filling this in. It's a little bit light and I'll add in blue for the dark parts. So I'm gonna take this fan, I'm gonna take this fan brush and I'm just gonna start dabbing it on. Bob Ross style, get some happy trees up in here. <laughs> I'm gonna go over that and grab some turpentine. Grab some more paint and I think I need to darken up this first part with some blue. So I'm gonna dab it on there and I wanna keep the paint fairly light on my brush. Cause I don't know, I have this hate relationship with fan brushes where sometimes they work if you get it on right and other times they just, they just don't do the job at all. There's a bit too much blue. I'm gonna go back to yellow and add in the yellow highlight streaks. Toss them all in there. Change the perspective of these trees so that we're all looking at them from the same point of view. And now we just gotta get some more paint and keep dabbing on these trees, cover them up, because in real life you can't ever really see all of their branches depending on what the trees are. And usually I typically don't do this. This is like, once the painting's done, it's done. Especially, this is from 2012. All right, all right. Let's get zoomed in a bit more. See closer what I'm doing. So right here, it's starting to become very one-dimensional like it's just one color of green so to change that up we just got to add more colors in there so I'm gonna throw in more yellow I'm only using yellow blue and white that's it and from that you can get an unlimited amount of shades from those two colors so I'm using pure yellow as shading and highlight for these tree branches. So they're gonna, so since my lighting is coming from the top left, the the lighting is gonna come from the top left as well. So all the brightest pieces should be, you guessed it, in the top left. And we can use a little bit of white as well to add in, help add in some of those highlights to really make a pop so that it's not so one dimensional, one dimensional green anymore. So when you go and look at literally anything, there's always like a plethora of colors, which is caused by the light. There's always different ways that light is hitting a single object to give different colors. So even if I'm darkening things, I hardly, I rarely use black. Because maybe like a dark blue might be more fitting or maybe a brown that could add more dimension than just black. I'm not saying never to use black. There's time and place for both of these things. I think I'm really messing up the bottom right here. <laughs> well, 
by adding in tons, just too much uh, brass tones when this was originally brown. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add in some brown now. I tend to use burnt sienna or raw sienna for brown. I'm gonna add that in, I'm gonna fix up, fix up that ground. Now this burnt sienna gives a bit of a red color into it. So sometimes I'll mix in raw sienna with burnt sienna and that will create the shade that I am looking for. So I'm gonna add in some brown. This is how I dip in my brush. I don't go straight into the pile of oil. And just add it in right here. And though I do my best not to use white, sometimes it's just, or not to use black, sometimes it's not dark enough. So I'm gonna peel in some ivory black right here, mix it in with the brown. I'm going to get this dark forest brown back to that color it should be. The bottom part looks so ugly. And that's part of the that's part of the deal when you're painting old stuff. Like it's it's tough it's tough to get that same color back again. Which is why you know you should just focus on that one area. Which is what I did not do. Add some more black on the bottom, black and brown. And the goal is to disguise this and blend this in with the other half of the painting. So it looks like they were all done on the same day with the same colors. You got a mix of different colors there. I use some of this brown, some of this brown and blue as the darker part that you might see on the bottom left of the trees as like the shading part. And then you can get capture both dimensions, of the light and the shadow and your leaves with this little fan brush. And if you don't use the fan brush, you can always use a flat head brush as well. I use a flat brush for most of my paintings. Anyways, we're working on this dark part. I'm distracting. And then some more green. And spill in. And now right here, I want to work behind the branch. I don't want to like fill up all my branches because you can see a little bit of some you know, when you look at trees, you get behind that one a little bit. Add some more volume here. Add some more yellow. I think I really took a lot of all the out a lot of brightness out of this bottom part right here when I filled it in. So I'm going to add in some little yellow highlights. kind of where I think the bushes would be popping out. All right, last I'm going to mix in some more blue with this green to create more of a shadow. Various aspects of the branches. I don't want to go darker. I'm maybe add in some of that black. I want to I want to larger contrast. It makes things pop out more and you notice the leaves a lot more or really anything more when you have that contrast there. And when you do this, you want to be very intentional and purposeful and where you're putting these brush strokes. Now, under trees, I do a little sweep up. Help you get that tree effect. If your fan brush is not cooperating as well as you like. <laughs> and I'll mix in some more color there. See, the fan brush, like, I think I missed this angle right here. It adds in these weird dots because my brush 
kind of flips apart, so I, I need to make sure that it's doing actually what I want. Right. It's like left and right brushes work well, and I fix up this part right here. Right. Add some dark. Some dark into this bush area too. Maybe some like really dark. Some more black, some more ivory black in this side. And then when you're done, call it good. And then just that part. When you think it's done, that's all really all up to you as an artist. You know, the better that you are as an artist is really determined on when you call it quits. Um, you know, the best artists out there, it's, it's really all about all the detail that they put in. And detail, something that everyone can do, it's just a matter of time. It's like you just need to spend longer to create that detail. So, and with that, I hope you've learned how to add in some trees. And yeah, let's back up here. Let's look at the full painting. So there it is, more of it. And now the trees are a bit fuller and I like it a lot better than originally. I'm gonna keep on adding some detail into this spot right here. And then, yeah, <laughs> with that, have a fantastic day and see you in the next video.